to another episode of Virtual Rambling. I am your host, Oryx, and today we are looking at Explore Fushimi Inari by Cave Zardi. Cave Zardi is a developer who has recreated several landmarks around the world in fantastic photorealistic detail um, using what I assume is photogrammetry in the Unreal 4 engine. So I'm just going a little bit off the beaten path here. As you can see, Fushimi Inari is a, a Japanese location. It is at the base of the Inari Mountain near Kyoto. And it's, uh, it's quite a famous location. Um, it has hundreds of these Tori gates, um, which are obviously very symbolic of Japan and Japanese culture. Tori gates are usually used to signify the entrance to a Shinto shrine. Tori gates are usually used to signify the entryway to a Shinto shrine. But as you can see, in Fushimi Inari is quite intriguing because it has literally hundreds of them. Interestingly, Inari is the name of the mountain which this shrine is located near. Fushimi is the name of what I assume is either a town or village nearby, Fushimiku. The mountain Inari also shares its name with one of the Shinto gods, uh, Inari the god or Kami is known for uh, its um, I believe it's for its blessings upon rice harvest uh, general prosperity um, in other parts of life as well such as say business prosperity and um, indeed these Tory gates we are walking underneath uh, in the actual real location. I think we're donated by either one or several Japanese businesses. Perhaps in the hope that they would appease Inari and have good prosperity. curious to see just how large this environment is. Um, I read that the actual Inari mountain has uh, shrines and pathways, walkways winding up the mountain and it takes oof, roughly two hours to scale. So it'll be interesting to see just how much of uh, this large location has been replicated. Here we can see a bell. Now I have to admit I don't know that much about the Shinto religion. Uh, I did actually live in Japan for six months. Uh, in a very rural location 
um, which was intriguing um, because there were a lot of shrines in the area um, and really quite beautiful um, they had koi ponds and wonderful majestic Tory gates some wonderful statues and uh, on occasion I managed to uh, capture a glimpse of a priest doing a blessing uh, one such occasion uh, someone drove their car into the shrine and uh, the priest was waving this like rather large elaborate looking uh, stick <laughs> at it and uh, someone told me later on that they were blessing the car so that the family may never be involved in a road accident and I love that about the Shinto religion the fact that nature and man-made objects both have uh, spirits attributed to them and that one might try and appease these spirits for good fortune obviously this is all very layman in terms of perspective but that's how we understand it now you might notice a little bit of popping I haven't actually played with the graphics uh, settings for this particular program um, I should have done but uh, your own experience might be a lot more high fidelity and vivid than this I'm rocking quite an old graphics card now so I imagine this would look even better with higher end software no, hardware, dear <laughs> but as it is I think this is absolutely gorgeous Cave Zardi I believe his name is Matt uh, is an Australian developer and uh, apart from this he's also done um, oh, two other locations that I'm aware of uh, I believe he's done an Icelandic Isle and a place called Waka Marina Valley in New Zealand This is like a perfect <laughs> game to ramble around. I've also uh, started looking into um, video game photography or virtual photography on Twitter. And I think this would be a game absolutely sublime for such a crowd. There's no like hood to get in the way. No, uh, no fail state or anything like that. Just, just a wonderful environment that's like perfect for taking photographs around. And I love how non-linear this environment is. There are a lot of branching pathways and the like. Um, although, uh, as far as I can tell, there do seem to be invisible walls as well. So you are, uh, I think the intention is to stay on the path. can't really wander off it to any large degree he says Ugh. oh there we go <laughs> stop right there um, this was also designed for virtual reality um, so you can get the virtual reality versions of this and uh, caves of the games But I 
uh, yeah, I've been to Kyoto, but I never came to this particular shrine, and I feel quite sad that I've missed out on this place. Um, in Kyoto, we did the some of the philosopher's walk, which is a kilometer long stretch of varying shrines. Ooh, it's got to photo mode as well. Just discovered. <laughs> so it doesn't look like I can go any further here. There does seem to be an invisible wall at this spot. So I'll turn around and uh, make my way down one of the different paths. See, Kyoto's got an absolute wealth of crazy beautiful places to visit. Uh, one of my favourites was a, uh, a very large temple in a place called Nara, surrounded by very, very f f uh, like friendly deer who would take biscuits off you. I'm assuming this would be someone's house. I can imagine living in a place like this. Said deer ate our map. <laughs> and there were uh, some like crazy impressive uh, statues. Um, in a huge shrine there. I have a lot of very fond memories of Japan. Uh, the vast majority of my time there was spent working in a, a home helping people. Um, but it was in a very remote village um, with lots of lovely countryside around and uh, I felt like I experienced all the seasons there when I arrived in March it was snowing uh, I got the full heat of the summer sun with the cicadas ringing all the time and uh, towards my leaving in September we got the rain season, um, which was a very welcome reprieve after the sun we had. And the forests in their local area were just gorgeous. Sometimes you'd be walking through and it'd be like this and all of a sudden you'd come across a grove of bamboo or a miniature graveyard which are kind of interesting they're very very small like Japanese graveyards quite interesting there's like a, a miniature castle on a very uh, on a small mountain that I'd love to visit All of these things, all of these memories. This all happened about 10 years ago. And uh, it makes me kind of yearn to go back to Japan. But uh, I think I decided when living there and uh, when coming back that, well, my heart's pretty much kind of in England. I love Japan so much. It's got such wonderful locations and people. This might shock you, but I'm not actually fond of all the food. <laughs> I really don't get what the thing is about ramen. It's okay. Ah, uh, what was it? But yes, 
I would love to go back again and again. I wonder if this is the oldest Tory. The paint on it seems like bleached compared to the, the rest of them. This one's got black paint, which is unusual. This is like a little grove. secret walkway here. Oh, that's cool. It's interesting that I haven't seen any in this recreation, but uh, Inari shrines tend to usually have fox statues. I thought that was quite interesting. I don't know if Inari is like envisaged as a fox but uh, foxes in Japanese culture are, you know mystical creatures um, you know often depicted as kind of tricksters but also uh, like granting of wishes I think again all very layman this is as far as I know, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Where have we come across now? So I'm wondering if this is like the main shrine at the top of the series of gates. And I wonder what these tiny gates here are for. That's interesting. Perhaps they're for spirits or something. Or something else, perhaps. So here we are. In front of a, a rather nice pond. Imagine full of koi in the uh, actual location. Look at these tiny little tori as well. I wish I knew more about the Shinto faith and why they would have tori of those size. Gosh. Just look how many of these gates there are. There are hundreds, maybe uh, in the real location thousands. I imagine uh, being in this actual location as well is very tiring. Lots of uphill walking. supposed to be Kyoto over there. It looks a bit city-esque. Oh. Oh, I thought I was stuck for a second there. If you can hear on the audio of this game, if you just listen, I think you can hear 
cicada in the background. Almost sounds like a kind of whirring. I do wonder whether I gave up on some of the previous paths a bit too easily. Um, I seem to be able to like push through past bits where I think I'm being stopped. Although this is quite clearly a dead end. I wonder why on some bits like here they use brown paint or just like varnish and on these bits they use red The signifiers and the the meaning behind the colours are. Why is this particular gate stone instead of wooden? The trees look kind of majestic as well. A very kind of scant in terms of foliage at the bottom, and then all of a sudden you get this thick canopy above you. <laughs> One of my uh, memories of first arriving in Japan was uh, we had a bit of an orientation when we first arrived and we were warned not to not to um, delve too far into the forests on our own uh, because Japan still has a lot of wildlife like bears uh, and I think wolves it definitely had snakes saw snakes um, but one thing they warned us about, and it was a translation thing, or a mispronunciation, they told us to look out for the dare. And we thought they said bears. But they actually meant deer, because uh, in Japanese pronunciation the letter E is an E. So dare it was. Um, I did actually, I think, come across a deer a wild deer a few times. I remember coming out of my door late at night and there was this like rustling in the garden and I saw a pair of eyes look up me, at me and like immediately scamper away and it was about the about the same height as a deer I'd say. I also saw some Massive insects. They have very, very large centipedes, big yellow things. Quite scary. <laughs> I think I've circled back on myself, haven't I? This looks like where I first started. in this kind of four completely separate paths. This one is kind of weirdly separated from the other ones. So I might not have been down here. And look at the ground as well. It's not paved. But yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous, like recreation of a, a forest and shrine. A lot of love and attention has gone into this. It's wonderful. Zealand Pro 
project top donators. Oh, that's a little uh, thank you from the developer there to the people who have donated to his works. Oh, I think I'm going to call it here. Um, as far as I'm aware, I think I've explored all the paths I can do. Uh, I might be completely incorrect, and there may be a lot more to this. Uh, you'll have to uh, just have a look for yourself. <laughs> um, it's on Itch and Steam, and it's Explore Fushimi Inari. This has been Oryx on Virtual Rambling, signing out.